Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Napoleon Total War 3 battlefield today and this is the Battle of Auerstedt which is the uh, twin battle of like Battle of Jena and you've got the Battle of Auerstedt happening in the same day at uh, basically the same time uh, this is between obviously Prussia and France again uh, the Prussians are trying to hold back the Grand Army that is now invading Prussia in 1806 this is a historical battle recreated today so I hope you guys are going to enjoy it in the uh, last battle, if you haven't gone and seen that uh, one, I would recommend you go and check that one out first. Uh, I won't give away what happens in that one, but it's a really good battle. And so yeah, the, the Prussian army here does not know what has happened at Jena, and is ready to face the other French army that is led by Davor and Bernadotte. So this is Davor's court over here, and Bernadotte is starting to appear over there on the far side. It looks like he's got some uh, hussars over here getting ready and marching up. What have we got here? We've got line infantry. These guys look pretty cool, as always. And like I said, uh, in the last battle, the Grand Army is kind of like in that like revolutionary period that it's like, uh, like just like coming out of the revolutionary period. It's kind of going into the proper Napoleonic period, like the uniforms, but it's not quite there yet. So it's kind of a cool sort of uh, hybrid going on, and we can see a gun going off here. Got the uh, four pounders going off. Three of them. Uh, pumping rounds, I think, trying to like hit uh, cavalry through here, which they are actually doing. They killed a couple of these dragoons, and it looks like it's going to be uh, one of the Prussian armies here setting up, uh, basically to the uh, to the right of this village. It looks like they're going to be fighting over over this village here, and actually getting some more hits on that cavalry. Just taking out quite a few of them. Uh, I think this army here is going to. This Prussian army here is dedicated with cutting off Bernadotte from uh, joining up uh, Davour, which is a very smart idea. Try and keep the French army separate before they can join up, but you can see we've got some uh, Hussars of the Colonel, Le Colonel General de Hussars. That's a cool name, whatever it, however you say that, but they've got a cool uniform as well. The real reason I'm looking at them, they've got cool uniforms. So yeah, this is a nice 2v2. It's a smaller one than Jenna, um, but it is just as, uh, like, filled with action. And you can see here the Prussians again, also in their revolutionary style, yet to actually do their reformations. That comes after these two battles. They get so spanked in these two that they then decide that they need to make some changes to their army. A 12 pounder here, setting up ready to go and do so. But yeah, if you haven't checked out the Jenna battle, I'd recommend going and checking that one out that one first. I'll leave uh, a link to it either now uh, or in the description or at the end. I definitely, well, hopefully you can just go and find it yourself. If you look, leave it to the end, then you've kind of ruined, spoiled this one anyway, or spoiled the order. But anyway, so that's a, that was a nice shot there anyway. That was what's like firing up, but yes. Uh, that was firing at the full bound, but yes, yeah, so, so now hopefully the people that have gone, gone to watch Jenna have gone to go and watch that one first. So I can tell you that obviously the Prussians did win the uh, the turnaround, uh, like the recreation uh, of Jenna. And uh, they are now going to obviously take that advantage to the uh, French here. They don't obviously know that, but the Prussians have won one of the battles. Uh, quite convincing, I'd say, uh, really. I mean, it was quite convincing, probably about... I mean, numbers might not necessarily be the, the case, but I think they like... About halfway through, it was, you could tell that they were going Sir, to just do that. General is General's under attack. Under attack. Uh, oh, he's been shot at. I think just Karl von Brunsch, uh, Brunschwig is getting shot at. And um, then the other one's obviously called uh, Württemberg, which is also a, na a name of a state, uh, which is kind of interesting. I guess he may be the Count of Württemberg, serving under the Prussians. I don't know where he is exactly right now. Over here somewhere, probably, or hiding. Uh, but yeah, you can see some random units here. This is just like uh, AI put in just so that they can then position their armies where they want to. So if you have the full AI armies in, like the extra AI armies, then you can put your, uh, you can decide where you want to position yourself. Because there are certain spawn points for armies in Napoleon Total War 3, which is quite good. Especially for like uh, historical battles like this, then you actually have like where everyone starts historically, which is good. It, it gives my, uh, gives me a bit of a history vibe and it gives me that little buzz uh, with the history. But uh, as you can see here, yeah, the uh, line infantry of the French are getting ready to like fire off across the... It looks like it's going to be a, a Breunschwig, yeah, Breun Breunschwig, I think that's how you say it. Basically firing across this uh, this plane here, you'd say. I mean, it looks like Wittenberg's also sending troops this way. I don't know what's really going on. It seems like the Prussians are like, half dedicating some forces in some direction, like Breunschwig's on both sides of this uh, like wooded area here. So it's going to have to do a lot of micro. There's actually a lot of Prussian reserves over here, I'm just seeing. Yet to make any appearances. There's also Breunschwig here. Lots of uh, musketeers and uh, grenadiers are here as well. You can hear the pipes going off. Glorious, glorious. Do love this mod. It's so good. And yeah, if you're enjoying seeing Home Total War 3 on the channel, 
Don't forget to support the channel with a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. As always, guys, appreciate the support, uh, and uh, let's just keep this channel growing. I can't imagine uh, we would have got this far at any point, but we have, thanks to you, thanks to you guys, basically. And uh, yes, look at this. We can have another volley coming off in a moment from this uh, 12 pounder that they've got here. I think this is trying to fire uh, the, like I said, the 4 pounder, or it might be could get a sneaky shot here at Bernadotte. He's made himself, he's uh, made himself very exposed in front of the hill. Go on. Quickly load! Load! Uh, they are still firing at uh, that gun up there on top of that hill. It's not a bad thing to fire. I think the guns, the uh, four pounders responding as well. And this isn't even a, f uh, yeah, this is a 12 pounder here, sorry. I do apologize, guys. 12 pounder trying to, uh, well, the 12 pounder of the Prussians is dueling with the, uh, 12 pound of the French, but the 12 pound of the French isn't interested. I think he's actually focusing down uh, other other stuff. Hey, there we go. This is the first blood. Schutz and Hare getting charged down by Chasseurs. And the Schutz and May return 33. They might have got a load of volleys in the back from the Fusiliers here, but uh, I mean, the cavalry may not return. 15 might be a bit too low for them. But yeah, look at these. Sa uh, Sachin and uh, Bio, uh, Weimar Fusiliers. Basically, it's Weimar and Sa Sachin. Uh, fusiliers. These are just new, normal fusiliers. These, these guns are really close to the front line, and Prussia's falling back, which I think just kind of invites. Well, now he's gonna, uh, like, he's gonna get his guns all uh, attached up and stuff, and he's gonna pull them back. Limbered up, that's the word. Why was I thinking attached? He's gonna limber his guns up and get out of there. This is a smart idea. But yeah, he was giving up the ground. I was like, you can't just leave that gun on its own. It needs to be careful. It's not quite sorted yet. It's still turning. There's a. Uh, uh, oh, that's Borussia again. I thought it was uh, Wettenberg. Or Württemberg, I should say. Yeah, he's slowly linking them up. These uh, Fusiliers might need to go into the line just to uh, save this, these guns. The Prussians are over here with their Hussars. This is Blucher's Hussars. Oh, I guess at this point, Blucher isn't actually a marshal. He's like a general, isn't he, at this point? I guess. But anyway, there's more shots going off. And there you go. The uh, French and the uh, Prussians are dueling it out. The first line battle is underway. They need to get that gun out of there. Here we go, the line infantry of France is now dueling with the fusiliers of the Prussians. And uh, I think, yeah, they got the guns out there just in time. We're gonna send another volley off, scare those Prussians off with another volley. There you go. I think there's more volleys going off. What's this? Another line battle going on over here. What's this? Musketeers against, uh, well, more line infantry. More line infantry. Oh, no, this is a light infantry. It makes a light in line, I think. And here, cavalry as well charging off now. Oh, cavalry in the back lines is Blucher's Hussars that were, uh, we were looking at just literally moments ago. They're now, they've just broken, uh, fighting some Chasseurs uh, Cheval, but they also took out the Chasseurs. I think they were trying to take out this gun that's uh, just here, but the Chasseurs just stopped them at the last moment, and I don't think those uh, Hussars will rejoin because they're running into French lines. Grenadiers the line here in reserve. Hopefully they don't leave their Grenadiers the last minute to use this time like they did in the, uh, in the Battle of Jena. I felt like they just kept them in reserve and they should have Send them forward a bit more. And yeah, I can see those hussars. They're not They're not returning. They're definitely not returning. So, I mean, it's a close... It's a... a I mean, it's just a shaky start for both sides. Both sides are uh, just kind of shaping up. Just seeing who's uh, stronger in what uh, areas. Got a six-pounder here. I mean, there's some huge cavalry units for the Prussians. Which is going to be a concern. These are dragoons here. 94. I've seen a uh, Karassia unit somewhere around. It's got over 100 men in it again. You can see the uh, line infantry of Prussia. Now opening fire for the Kaiser. Open fire, man. Excellent, excellent. That's what we like to see. Now they're getting shot by artillery. I think that poor... Oh, no, that poor guy might just die from musket ball, I think. Let's just watch down this line. Oh, that's glorious. The smoke, the crackle of muskets. Just gets you... Wo wakes you up in the morning. It's not even the morning, but you know what I mean. If you weren't awake at this point, if you were like nearby, you would be awake now hearing like the shots like go off and the cannonballs exploding. Just the cries of battle. I mean, these French here got a nice little flank going on. These Prussians have been turned to face them. They need to be careful though, they don't want to overextend because this cavalry here. Here you go. Here's the huge unit the Crassiers. 129 unit, uh, men of Crassiers here. That's going to be scary and definitely going to be a, a problem. And Blucher's uh, cavalry did return. 
And they have definitely got a viable target at these uh, 12 pounds here, which I think they're going to try and do. Apparently, victory is in, already in someone's hand. I don't think that's the case. Hardly anything's been lost. <laughs> it's kind of a bit bizarre. Maybe it's because they just defeated all the uh, AI units. That quite possibly is. The reason. I mean, they, certainly these musketeers not looking great on morale. And yeah, certainly falling back like this, that's going to hurt the morale even more. But, uh, I mean, they are, yeah, look at that breaking on that side. I think they need to uh, be careful. He might want to try and take on Bernadotte's forces. Bernadotte doesn't seem to have a massive amount of stuff. He's got some decent hussars. Could go for, a, like, a cheeky kill on uh, Bernadotte himself with those uh, hussars of uh, Blukas. Or just go uh, and then go for, like, Devour after. Could be viable. Damage that morale. Surely the Prussians have realized that they've got a cavalry unit just in behind now. I mean, this is what the Prussians are trying to do hard. They're trying to flank harder, but their center is, like, breaking. There's, like, just nothing here. They've got to send those grenadiers up soon, because they've just got, like, lone units of Fusiliers here getting outgunned. And they're falling back now just because of that. And they've got to mobilize, like, cavalry vans as well they've got as well. These goon units and their uh, Karasu units are huge. I don't think the French have got anything, like, close to that sort of size. And they've got another Karasu unit there, 74 men. Because that's what they did in Jena in this, uh, in, like, the recreation of that one. They just had so much more carry did the uh, Prussians and the Saxons. They just overwhelmed the French. And they just stood no chance. See this artillery just taking chunks of the mining country. They're going to try and get a volley off here. I think they are. No? Maybe not. They, yeah, I was going to say surely they're out of range. Or literally, like, the edge. But they just need to, like, paint, like, they need to, like, go through this uh, woodland here to the uh, Prussians and then just cut off this road. Cut off Bernadotte's access to uh, Devore, which, I mean, he's doing quite well at the moment. I mean, he didn't do it in history, I don't think, Bernadotte. He didn't really make it to help Devore in the end. Or Davor, yeah, in the end. He kind of just, like, left him hanging and Devore goes on to win it. Uh, like, both, both these victories are historically uh, French victories. There you go, you can see the line infantry. He's gonna move forward again. Granite is the line in this unit as well. It's good to see them. They're getting holes put into them with their uh, by the gun by the guns here. I don't know what, this is a six pounder here. The Sh Schutzen's back, it needs to just be careful. It's gonna do like little s snipes here and there. Grenadiers still getting hit hard. Brave men. Foolish men, possibly, but brave. God, I love this mod. This mod is just amazing. Can't wait to play some more of it myself. Line infantry here fighting off in the woods. Like I said, this is definitely an area that I think the Prussians need to be focusing down. Because, I mean, if they can, literally, if they can just pr like push through here, there's not much here in the way. They can then just cut off Bernadotte's access, like I said. Cut it off and just deny any sort of access. And look, our French gun's breaking. Why is that? Oh, I guess one got hit by, uh, got like a lucky shot from one of the 12-pounders there. And that's a, that's a four-pounder out of the game. That's huge. Look at this. The Prussians are really getting around their cavalry now. That's really good to see. I mean, I don't know why they've got all this wide infantry here, though. This musketeers. I mean, I guess they can't cross this, like, ditch or something, possibly. But they've got so much, like, infantry and guns here that need to, like, get into the battle. And turn up late because they're at the moment. Oh, look at this. Breusch, uh, like, Breuschwig's core is getting absolutely, like, destroyed. These dragoons here are breaking. This is the Chasseurs of Cheval. And you can see the guns are now under threat. And they are actually now fully under threat. And Breuschwick's now in the fight. I think he might be under threat and gonna die. So be careful. Yeah, and that's just a Cheval unit. It's just in like one charge. Has done so much damage. And they have got to send in their Dragoon unit. Clean it up. Or go after and counter their own stuff. Like go and take out um, their, the French guns. They need to push forward this uh, infantry again. Push forward this infantry. And just then just turn on this uh, these forces in here in the wood. And they can sandwich them between the two. And then they just push up this one unit of musketeers down the center. And then have the big sweeping arc here. From the oppression, uh, from like the what Wurttemberg's uh, left or right. I don't know what that is to him. That uh, probably is, uh, well, these forces here. He's got like five units here they could turn in. And that would do a lot of damage. Like the French here are well overextended. Well and truly overextended. They've got so, quite a few like regiments still. But like they were pretty safe. And now they've like... They're dragging themselves away from that aid that they were getting from Bernadotte. And I think they went for a charge. Yeah, they went for a charge, didn't they? I think. Again. Yeah, I think that Hussar unit there at Wurttemberg went for a charge on uh, the guns. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention entirely. Just seems like the guns uh, carriage is a bit damaged. So maybe something happened there. Another uh, four-pounder here turning up. 
Have a volley, men. Into the Prussians and just over that hill. You can just see them. You can see a lot of them getting up. Let's have another hole put into them, boys. Oh, excellent. Oh, God. It's literally causing havoc over there. Causing havoc and just like putting holes in these poor men. They are so low on morale. It's, it, like, that's what artillery does. It doesn't do like damage to infantry. It'll kill, like, I don't know, five or six, maybe a shot if it's lucky. But it'll do mor morale damage. And why are they falling back? I don't see the need. I think if they put the pressure on Bernadotte, then they have it. But, oh my gosh, here you go. Like, this is. Okay, fair enough. Maybe there's a reason why he didn't sandwich. These were all just hiding here. But I would have thought you'd be able to see these guys. The Prussians are, uh, yeah, they're certainly in a bit more disarray than they were, say, in, at Jena. I'm not quite sure what to do. They haven't even got their full force here, that's the thing. They've got, like, a tiny bit of a force out as well. And I can see some Chasseur Cheval going again. Oh, yeah, right in the middle of the fight, like, right in the middle of the battle. Yeah, the Dragoons here, I think, just got a full force of, uh, musket fire before they went into that combat. Or they might have got artillery, one or the other, but, yeah, their morale was damaged before they even hit that, like... Art, like even hit that cavalry but if they keep whittling down this cavalry they've got a chance of the Prussians they've got a chance yeah see I keep thinking like there's nothing here but there's clearly like a lot of infantry and that's just line of sight that's why you bring cavalry they have good line of sight and you just I think you just need to push forward they brought like these final finally these uh, reserves are coming up like all these grenadiers and stuff and the extra gun units coming up six pounder oh we've got the uh, French are gonna go for a cavalry charge all the way out here, with no support. Broken uh, the Hussars of Württemberg. They're now going to go for the uh, the Crassies are now going in 74. Surely the Crassies win this fight. If they don't win this, then uh, I don't know what they're going to win. Uh, well, they might win with the 129 Crassies. But, uh, yeah, surely they've got to win this. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Winning that. Routing everything. Blue is now coming back with his uh, Hussars. Excellent. Excellent. And, yeah, you can see they're trying to shoot with their line infantry all the way there. Royal Roussillon. That's a cool name. I wouldn't say they look like any different, like, I wouldn't say they had royalty to them, but yeah, they look cool. I'll give them that. And yeah, they look at that. The uh, French have now counted. They've taken out the gun. Uh, that Those, like, Chasseurs de Chevals here were basically spent anyway, so they've now got those uh, Hussars in behind the enemy lines. And this is what they need to do, basically, now. They just need to now just, like, cause havoc. They now are in behind the back lines. They can just... They've damaged that French mobility so much that there's literally like, I don't think there's much in cavalry left. And just like, uh, just like a Jenna, I think now the French infantry is now at the mercy of the uh, Prussian cavalry. But I would say that the infantry for Prussia is still at the mercy of the French. Like, they're winning every single duel so far, the French. Yeah, I can't see any, any cavalry left but far that generals. Such a nice position, position here. Look, they are so scared about this cavalry. They have like so many squares set up ready, protecting. There's a 12 pounder here, which is still shelling into Wurstenberg's like, uh, like flank over there. Such a nice position. I <laughs> love it, love it. Fire! Is the other one gonna fire? Possibly not. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Putting holes. Holes in the enemy line. Look at this French line. Just ready to go. Ready to go. You just see beyond like all the French down there as well. Looks glorious. Looks glorious. And the Prussians are coming forward again with well they're coming back, I guess, with their cavalry is what they're doing. They're actually doing a they're doing a charge. They're sending in some uh, line infantry to charge this gun emplacement. This is brave. Can they fire in time? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, they're not gonna reach in time. Oh, that's a shame. The cavalry there, you can see they're just charging the back of the French. Um, that's, that is obviously going to be huge. That's going to help. I mean, this is a huge and dangerous uh, French fan going on right now. They've got the beating of all of these four infantry of the uh, Prussians. They really need to fall back. And uh, I mean, I don't know why they didn't send in the general. Why are they not sending these units to go and help? Literally, they need these men here to help. Uh, I think this line here can hold itself against the French for a little while. Maybe not with the guns now. They might need to send the general on to just charge down that uh, unit. I don't know. Are they that worried that they're just uh, resetting up the center? I don't... Oh, I don't know. I don't play enough in the Poe Total War 3 to realize the tactics, but I'm sure there's a tactic in there. But uh, they are falling back with like all of their infantry here, which is, just seems a bit bizarre. Like, they definitely had the beating of all these units, especially with the cavalry here, supporting, like, Dragoons just charging constantly. 
into the battle. We've got, yeah, those Tatars. And look at that. Break like two units straight off the bat, basically. They, they're going to form a square, or what can. They need to go and help over here now. Just run down this line here. The French, yeah. Look at that. The French got in combat with the uh, general here. Württemberg's now in combat. Eugene. The Württemberg. I'm pretty sure he's like a count or something like that. Or probably he's a count of Württemberg. I'm pretty sure he, yeah, he's quite a major commander. He's at Leipzig later on in uh, the war. The French here getting broken by a uh, cavalry. Crassi is getting sent in. This is uh, starting to crumble a little bit for the French. Like I said, the French uh, infantry is now at the mercy of the uh, Prussian cavalry. The Prussians don't even care. They're just going to combat. These are the grenadiers here in combat with the line infantry. Grenadiers should win this. It's what their bread and butter is all about. Just melee combat. And then you can see they're trying to get the guns back. Oh, they're not. They're just defending the guns with all their might. All this line infantry is going to hold with it. The square. Anything that can't form square right now gets punished. Oh, jeez. Look at that. Poor Grenadiers. They're just like, what do we do? What do we do? Such reckless hate. French reforming up. I mean, they've got to be aware of this cavalry in the back. Surely they just... Those that can form square have to do it. Like, you get this close and you're just like, oh, but maybe they just accept their fate. Or maybe he's micro... No, there he goes. Square formation. That is going to save them just about from the Dragoon Charge. I don't think all these units can form square. I certainly, I'd be sending my cavalry, I'd be charging like straight into this linchpin here, like into this linchpin unit here, which is the this line infantry. Just go in here, then you split them in half again, and you just go either way with the cavalry. I mean, you, oh, yeah, and you just go into that one, then into that one. This whole area here is opened up, and then Bernadotte and Devore are uh, like separated once again, which is what I think you've got to do. You can see Bernadotte's trying to find a new safe spot. It looks like Devore's going to hide in a farmhouse. Maybe the smartest play to be. There you go. The cavalry's going to go and take out this gun unit. That's a really good target to take out as well, actually. This uh, four-pounder here is not going to appreciate being charged by cavalry. Oh, dear. Yeah. That's it. Gone. I mean, they may break the cavalry as well, though. I mean, it might get shot by a uh, musket fire here. Yep, yeah, it's gone. May return. Oh, maybe not now. It's been shot by its own men. 22 men. And yeah, the dragoons and the hussars sound to uh, break and waver. Wants to go over here. More dragoons. Yeah, they need to be careful of the Prussians. They don't want to just throw away this advantage. Otherwise, it'll turn way back in favor of the French. Need to keep the Dragoon unit alive, along with the Crassiers. I don't know where they've gone. Please tell me they're not dead. And there's some over there. Where's the 129 man unit? It's not dead, is it? No, it's not. It's in combat. Oh my gosh. It's right here. It's just get, getting right involved with the front lines, and they just made a huge hole. And well, actually, it's the final unit of French that was just like stood here. And the French have fully retreated back to this uh, tree line now. And it's like the tree line, then it's this uh, building here. And then it's like just a little bit beyond to the right. I mean, they really need to put a few units in this building to defend uh, Devore. Or get Devore out. It's one or the other. But the French are still doing quite a lot of damage to the Prussians here. But the Prussians got more and more men just appearing. I think these are the uh, reserves that are like on the far right that haven't decided to help this, uh, this flank here out. And they're now swinging around. And I think they're going to go and attack over here. I think they're coming back over here to come and uh, do a real suck punch to Bernadotte. This is where the like the Prussians are just pushing hard here. And I think that is what's going to happen. I think this flank's just going to keep falling back. It'll take the it'll take the hits, and then you just watch as uh, like Bernadotte's corps gets slowly and slowly great away. And there you go. You can see there's some line infantry. I think that was trying to get in here. And there are some more units in here now. We've got the uh, Trilliers in here as well. Light infantry unit defending their marshal. Got more Grenadiers fighting out with some line infantry here. Grenadiers in pink. Interesting colour choice. And yeah, they broke. They broke those uh, pink Grenadiers. Trilliers did their work. Plan now, I would say, if I was playing this, take this unit out here. Um, take this unit out on the end. The uh, 94th line infantry. There's a mustache unit. It's a mustache unit. Because then if you take that out, then whatever's north of... Uh, well, there's actually not much north of this building. You just get around the flanks, though. You get around the flanks with the cavalry again, and you cause more havoc. 
I don't know if there's anything here. There must be some stuff there, but that's obviously a big gap in the line if there isn't. Prussians being a bit nervy about going into that forest. The Prussians have set up a new line of defense here. It's a good spot to set up the line. Got the uh, forest on your right. Well, two forests on your right and left, actually. This is where they're going to stand. Grenadiers here, opening fire. This building has fallen to the enemy. They're taking a building. Who's taking a building? Oh, the French are taking the building. Oh, okay, the mustache men are taking the building. Thought it was the Prussians who are taking the building or something like that. I was like, Prussians taking buildings? What is happening? Is the boy okay? <laughs> sort of thing. Worried for his uh, safety as well. Put safety and health together. Health and safety. That works. Grenadiers duking now. I mean, they they'd be better on a charge, but charging this many uh, infantry may not be the best idea. You can see in the background there, the dragoons doing their little bit, just keeping the French aware that they're there, reminding them that they're at an ever-present threat. And here they go, actually. Here they go. They're going to go straight down the middle. It's going to take out a unit. Which ones are going for? Just well, three at the same time, by the looks of it. Why not? I guess uh, they need to be careful they don't get shot by their own men, though. Uh, these units they probably want to hold fire. Uh, there you go, breaking that one, breaking uh, two of the three. They need to fall back now so they don't get shot too much by uh, any friendly or enemy uh, musket fire. And they did pretty well. Got out of that with a very little casualties. Now that I just go and do that again, further down the line. Take out maybe this one or like these two here. Oh, that's a good shot. You see that? Like that cannon just put like a huge hole in this uh, line infantry unit. Big concern there. Well, it's not really. Big concerns if a uh, general starts to die. I mean, really, I don't know what the Prussians are doing, but they should just make it, like, this army here could just make a full-out assault on this uh, village. I think this uh, Prussian army here has got the beating of the, what remains of the French. And you can see the French are having to reorganize their lines, make sure there's no holes in the line. Making it easier and easier for the Prussians to, uh, to deal with. I and mean, I think, yeah, they're going to go for this unit again. It's pretty low, possibly on morale. I don't know. Here we go. They're going to try and form square, though. Oh, they managed it. They sort of managed it. Yeah, they lost a lot of troops under the dragoons. Yeah, that was, uh, that was unfortunate. We've got units here. Fusilier's coming around. Yeah, these two units here, they could almost go like really far wide and then they could throw in the French flank again, which is what I'd possibly do. More units here. There are more units just waiting in these tree lines here for the French, I'm pretty sure. Looks like uh, DeVore has uh, given up her, uh, well, given up her hiding in a building unless he's still in there and just can't see. More line infantry coming through here though. I was going to say, I think the French aren't out yet. They're not finished yet. They've still got plenty of stuff. It's taken a bit of a bumpy ride to start with, but that's how it was in history. The French didn't start well at either battle. Usually because they were outnumbered. Uh, well, not usually, but that was the reason why. They were outnumbered and uh, so they start with a pretty rough start but uh, they basically the quality of the commanders and the troops over time improved uh, their state in the battle and they won for those reasons and also because the Prussian like infantry was poorly equipped and poorly commanded at this point so they didn't stand a chance but it's hard to replicate poorly equipped equipped troops poorly commanded troops I guess unless you have poor commanders but I mean these are some really good commanders here today as we can see and we can see uh, some more fusiliers getting ready hiding in these woods looking for an opportunity I wonder if this line for is going to turn face the other way they're just ready at, at the ready I think it's one of my favorite units this line for tree the dark blue with like the green looks really nice like the green uh, I don't know what you call it like bits on the shoulder it looks really nice quite a fan of that quite a fan Yeah, this Prussian army over here is just, uh, well, it's playing neutral. I don't know if that's part of, like, the historic, like, the, uh, realism, like, sort of, like, incompetent commanders, almost. I don't know, that can't be cool if it was. But they need to get pushing hard. This, uh, oh, they need to be careful there to the Prussians, this unit here. Well, might be shooting into the back of, uh, the unit in front of it. Ever so slightly. Yeah, they're falling back gradually, the Prussians again. They actually broke that French unit. There you go, falling back again, and they're going to be replacing the line with some fusiliers. They're actually going to transfer some units out. 
like some uh, weak ones, put some uh, more fresh units in. Wittenberg here, still alive. We've got a very small uh, chief of staff with him. There you go. You can see the flanks happening now. Got some fusiliers getting around the back to these uh, light infantry. This is going to be a shame seeing one of my fave units getting absolutely annihilated. But uh, actually, there you go. They're not going to. They're not going to allow it to happen. Yep. Yeah, send up the bugle. We'll have a volley. For the Kaiser. Yes. Don't know if they actually got any shots or any kills. They definitely got some shots off, but I don't know if any kills. Can't see any many, many Frenchmen dropping. I would have thought the light infantry here had better accuracy at this range. Uh, they didn't seem to kill anyone either. It's like I said, the musket's pretty inaccurate uh, weapon in history, and obviously, uh, opponents of War Three replicates are quite nicely. It's not very easy to uh, like kill people. The best way to like get units off the battlefield is with morale, not with actually entirely annihilating the unit. Which is quite good. Obviously, cavalry is a very good way to get units off the battlefield as well. But like a line infantry battle will happen for a lot, like go on for a long, long time. <laughs> it's just these French just keep coming forward. They ain't giving up. Losing a fair few men now, though. These first few volleys. Lovely, just seeing like the silhouettes of men as like a unit just like fires a volley. It looks amazing. Another volley. No, maybe not. He's firing further down the line. But not here, not here, it would seem. And this Prussian unit is going like way, way wide now. What is it doing? It's chasing something that it shouldn't. Yeah, I think he got choked, given an order to chase something it didn't need to chase. The uh, Karassi is back here, the, the uh, 129 man unit, which is uh, a bit low now, is uh, back. We've got some more units coming across. They might be coming across from the forest over there. Um, but Bernadotte's here to rally the men, do his best. I mean, I'm seeing some movement now by this Prussian army. Uh, it's sending like some crashes over here, and we've got some musketeers doing stuff. But nothing like major. I think they're. I don't know what they're trying to do. There's obviously like a unit of French here in the building. It's Devor again. Oh dear. He's just going to hide out the rest of the battle in this uh, town in one of the farmhouses. Volley from the line infantry, maybe? No. And these are what these are line infantry firing. Quite nicely. Get some shots off on those uh, Karassis while they come by. This unit's looking the wrong way as well. They need to turn around. Come on. Turn around. 180. No, nope, they're going to retreat even more. Uh, clearly, they don't like the flank that's happening is not going really to plan. They need to draw these units out and they could probably go for a Bernadotte uh, attack. We'll certainly take out this one now. Oh, there you go. Foreman Square, Foreman Square. Hop. Pull back. Pull back, Krasiers. Oh, no. Yeah, there he goes. They're falling back. I mean, this uh, light, this Fuselier should take advantage while, and shoot it while it's in square formation. Do some damage. Like I said, the Prussians just need to go through the forest. Many a time. Go through the forest, men. It's the way to win. The generals died. Okay. Oh, that's just a random shot there. Uh, so that means Bernadotte's dead. He's broken just like that. Okay. So they did in the end just decide to go with the general side. I think it's that gun over there. Um, yeah, I think it's this four pounder here. Oh, it's not. The, it's the twelve pounder. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's directly literally trained on like Bernadotte. Yeah, it's been putting holes into Bernadotte. That's a shame. Shame that's how it's going to go, but I mean, you left him there very much uh, obscured. I guess that's the reason why Devor's in his building over here. He can't keep him safe, really, so why not put him in a building? But I mean, he's, he's, he's still not much safer. If a unit goes in there, Bern uh, Devor, sorry, is uh, safe. He's not safe. He's uh, going to get murdered. These musketeers could do the job quite easy on their own. It looks like they're going to send these units back the way they came. They're sending yeah, musketeers back. Going to go wide back this way, then probably round, I think. Try and help this line infantry. Uh, well, line battle going on. Jesus. It's a big holes. Oh my gosh, this unit's getting absolutely evaporated by the 12 pounder. That is going to be the way to route units. Just put a few holes in. 
Two units with 12 pounders. Jeez, it was nasty. It's just good to watch the line, the line battle sometimes. Just watch a couple of volleys go off. I enjoy it so much. See the uh, French are re uh, maneuvering in the, the back there. Clearly something's going on. Oh, no, they're just pulling units out of the front line. This seems even more bizarre. I wonder if they're making a rear guard for this cavalry. They're worried about that cavalry in the rear. They're going to just start forming squares. Yeah, just to stop them doing any charges. Smart. But what you should do then is just go down this line here. Just go down the actual line. Char like charging on the sides. But I mean, the French have the numbers, I think, in, as in units. Like here currently. I mean, the Prussians keep bringing up more and more men. And they also won't engage everything with the Prussians, or the French are more than willing to, uh, to some degree. Like, I know there's these squares are here. But they're, 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 doing, they're doing their bit. Yeah, there you go. There's now a rear guard for this huge line infantry battle. Uh, I can hear char charging going on. Bizarre, I won't lie, but uh, fair enough. Oh, there you go. That's what it is. That's what's happening. The French were in this forest here. I think they charged out while they got charged. They've been broken anyway by musketeers. And now the 89, uh, 85th uh, line infantry is broken. And now they can go through here. I bet you there's nothing, no French to the right here. If there is French to the right, I'll eat my shoe. I will eat my shoe. That Prussian unit, I can just go straight in there and won't have any problems. There is actually more uh, French over here. So the mustache men are still here, defending Devor in this building. Still engaging the Prussians here. I don't even think the Prussians are interested. I think they're just, just going for the encirclement. I'm not sure. I think there's artillery here. Could be wrong. I saw an explosion go off here. So there might be artillery, but that's not nothing major. And yeah, you can see that anything that's in this wood is about to get pincered uh, by musketeers and uh, caressiers. I don't think there is actually artillery there. I think I was uh, just looking at you like an explosion from uh, the 12 pounder. I'll be putting holes in this uh, line infantry here. It's, yeah, it's just in the break, brink of wavering. Huge, again, I mean, this, this flank is for the taking. It really is for the, for the taking. And uh, yeah, the French are uh, certainly looking uh, a little bit on thin ice. Oh my god, that unit is absolutely like in focus on. I mean, the 12 pounder is so close, it cannot miss. And there you go, another unit breaking to the 12 pounder. And I don't think they've got a uh, six pounder set up as well yet. Here we go. There's nothing in that wood, so I'm not even my shoe. They reformed. They're now getting ready with the crashes to can charge you wherever they fancy. I charge this unit here. The mustache men. And there you go, the cavalry's gone in. There you go, the cavalry. Oh my god, there's a huge chain right by the French. That is GG, I'm surely for the French. Um, that's just like all the line which just broke there and then. They're now pushing forward. Um, yeah, they. I don't know where they went wrong, really, for the French. I guess because possibly throwing the cavalry away a bit early. Like, they were a bit, just a bit easy with it. They're like, the, Fre the Prussians hadn't even committed any of their crassiers. And, they, the, and the French were just like, yeah, we'll just throw our hussars and our chasseurs in. I mean, they're, like, they're worse units than the crassiers, but even still, you've got to, be, you've got to keep your cavalry around. You need that mobility. And they're also good at just protecting the rear of, like, like lion infantry fights like this. If you, uh, like, if they had chasseurs from that lion infantry battle that we've been watching for the last five, ten minutes, then the lion infantry never would have come to any threat. So, they are very key. For defensive and offensive works, uh, people use them very differently. And the, the, this French player decided to, or the French players decided to be offensive with them. They did kill some artillery, yes, but uh, in the end of the day, 
I don't think artillery would have been the, the game changer. Obviously, this, the 12 pounder has put a lot of holes into these uh, battalions, but most of the battalions would probably be okay if it wasn't for cavalry charges. Battalions, regiments, whatever. I think they're regiments, not battalions. And there you go. That's basically most of the French left gone. There is obviously a bit still over here at the French right. It's got people like Maria Le Pen and uh, Napoleon Bonaparte with his armies. <laughs> oh dear, that was terrible. That was a terrible joke. Um, but yeah, it looks like, well, what is it? It's the uh, unit line infantry that can merge or uh, through buildings, which is kind of interesting. And we've got uh, Devor over here. I'm sure there's Trilliers sticking around here somewhere. And there you go, it looks like the uh, pressure's are moving on. They're just going to move up to take uh, on the next obstacle, which is a lot a lot smaller. And there you go, they're turning around these units as well. And the Prussians have got a few small units of, uh, I presume these are Grenadiers, yeah. Grenadiers getting set up. The pink Grenadiers are here. Grenadier Shack or whatever its name is. Shack, uh, Shack, I don't know. These are the pink one anyway. Pink boys doing their bit. And there, and yeah, there you go. Devor's gone into combat, that's a bit of a brave... Bit of a brave play there, but uh, fair enough. And that'll probably just break what's ever left of the French army. Going up against Grenadiers. A brave man is devoted in, in, in reality and in uh, and in this battle. What we've got here, we've got Trilliers, a line infantry unit. They're going to start building there. Smart, I guess, but Devoe's gone. These line infantry and line infantry won't last much longer. Mustache is still here. There's actually another unit in here. I don't know why Devoe left. They're just stayed in there. Bizarre, but I mean, he's he needs his cavalry really to be any use. But yeah, there you go. The French are now just going to garrison these last three buildings, and the Prussians will probably take them one by one. I'll go for this one first with the uh, pretty weak. Yeah, look at this. Morale is just terrible. It's, it's like get the Prussians get close, and they just get upset. What we've got here, we've got a more line view of the Royal Roussillon, and then a. Uh, the artillery is still trying to break. It's going through the buildings. Like, yeah, we're, we'll get there eventually. I want this perspective of these uh, line infantry up here on this balcony. It's kind of cool. Firing anything and everything. Doing their best for the Emperor. Uh, this is kind of surprising. I mean, I guess you can't uh, replicate, like, bad commanding choice because obviously you want to play to win. Uh, but I'm surprised the French didn't win either of these. I mean, they had the they had the smaller army, so I guess if they'd uh, gone off like both like the French armies were smaller, then I guess they were gonna have a pretty rough time. But I would have thought that the Grand Army roster was better than like the early Prussian roster, because well, obviously in history it's it's destined to beat it. Like the French early part of the war and going into uh, well well into the war really, uh, they had the be the best army, the best equipment. Just uh, apparently not today. Got a, yeah, look at this. They're just putting holes into this building here. Six percent. I just send in some grenadiers. Send in some of these grenadiers. They'll they'll take the place. It's only seventy-two line infantry. Send grenadiers into all three of these buildings to do fine. Look at these brave men holding out to the last. Firing through the gaps in the uh, wall is very, very nice, very satisfi satisfying. If you need a drink, there's a well there, boys. It's your mouth will get very deep, like very dry, after, like ripping open all those powder bags. I mean, if you, if you die, then you don't have to worry about thirst, but like that. That, that's something. Fight to the last man. Poison every well as well while you're here. It looks like there's going to be no French army marching on Berlin. It looks like the French are going to lose up both Jena and Auerstadt. And it's been a quite a good one. Yeah, it's been quite a good one. I wouldn't say it was much closer than the uh, than the other one. Again, the French, I think, uh, are very aggressive. So on this left-hand side, it kind of detached themselves from Bernadotte's army when Bernadotte was desperately trying to like come down this road and support 
And uh, I, that's the only mistake I think that the uh, Prussians made, was that they allowed them to join up. Uh, I think they not allowed them to join up and had two separate battles. And made them better, they may not have. I don't know. They may have lost that way. I mean, the way they played it this time, they, they've done all right. Look at this building. It's getting fired on three sides. Um, by mu like by Prussian musketeers and line infantry and all sorts. Send in the grenadiers though. Send in the grenadiers. They'll route anything from there. Oh, I think they're just going to want to blow the building to pieces. Wanting to blow the building to pieces. I should have said <laughs> the Prussians like, can we just send in our cavalry? Uh, it's just so good. Firemen. Through the little holes, like uh, crenellations almost, of a, of a castle. Oh, I think they're broken. Yeah, that's that unit gone. There you go. They couldn't take it being shot on like three sides any longer. It'll be this one next, I imagine. The French here, yeah, they're quite strong. Oh, there you go. Grenadiers fighting it out. The pink grenadiers fighting against the uh, mustache men. And the mustache men and the grenadiers are broken. Support there of the uh, Leger and Garabal. And we've got a. Uh, oh, this is the other like part of the uh, mustache unit. It was like half of it was in here, half of it was out here, like in the building, and half was outside. It's no wonder they didn't fight very well. I thought it was quite a big unit, but it was at one point. Uh, it's been halved, but like that. Leger in Garibal. Awesome. Try and get an angle like this way. Those guys in the uh, sort of see what they're doing there. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see what they're doing. There you go. That's kind of alright. Firemen! Oh, they're breaking. Don't tell me they're breaking as well. No, they're just repositioning, I think. Are they coming out of the building? Yeah, they're coming out of the building. They're just going to fight in the street. Better idea. Get over and done with. Fighting inside the building's a cowardly way to go. Cowardly way. And there you go. They're breaking just like that. Taken the building, they're taking sir. the building. Oh no, and the French, I think, are just taking them, like, gone in and coming back out. I don't know. They've certainly lost that building, though. The French are breaking that one. And here they come. This is the final unit. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been a really fun battle. And, uh, yeah, so it looks like the Battle of Auerstadt, like Jenna, is going to be won by the Prussians today. History has been changed twice. Twice in two days. Don't see that often. Officer over there just firing his pistol. That's cool. Yeah, I love the, like, the green, like... The green, uh, like, headband, I don't know, headband, uh, like, feathers and stuff like that looks awesome. Like, green and, green and blue, like a dark green and a dark blue. Oh, they look good. Look at that. Look at those pricks over there. Green that bit. Still flanking around, even to this day. Flanking around. And here, here they come. Grenadiers coming in. They're going to finish the job off. Oh, dear, yes. We're out these line in, uh, light infantry. Oh, they broke, actually. Wow, they broke both sides. Fair enough. Well, that's a win for the Prussians. If they <laughs> if they break the French, that's a win. I don't know what's really left. I um, don't think anything's left, really. Is there something in here? It's the Prussians are in here, not the... Uh, no one else is in there. Unless it's the French is routing again. I don't know, but I'm just going to just fast forward up. Oh, it's the uh, killing the uh, CPU over there. Oh, that's what they had to go and do, I guess. Yeah. Oh, don't tell me they have to go and kill the other one. Which is like a million miles away. Oh, actually, no, they, the other one was really close for them. Uh, maybe not then. Maybe, who knows. That might be the end. That might be the end. But I'll just uh, fast forward for the sake of video. Don't need to see any more of, uh, well, just shooting down running men, really. It's just a bit of a shame. That's how it ends. Like, Napoleon Total War battles either end with, like, a really, like, not a wet fart, but just, like, really anticlimactic because there's just, like, nothing left to get. Oh, there you go. It's just units coming back. It's not finished. They're not finished to these light infantry. They want another to take another charge from the grenadiers. They think they can do it. I think you're wrong. I mean, they're the, they are the incomparable. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I literally couldn't answer the door. There was, like, someone at the door that needed, uh, well, to deliver a parcel. And I was uh, just like, God damn it. You couldn't have just waited, like, literally, like, a few more moments to just arrive with that parcel. We're just about to finish. But there you go. Look at that. Werdenberg is going to charge. Bit of a strange reason, just sending your general when you've won this battle, but I guess I'm just going to gun him down as well. Maybe they don't think he's uh, served well. There you go, the general's died for uh, pressure as well. And there you go, the uh, French breaking once again. 
I'll just fast forward and uh, just see what's at the end. I don't think there's really anything major going on. And there you go. Victory for the uh, for the Prussians. So they did very well. So yeah, this was sent in again by uh, Antonio Hansen. Thank you for letting me use this man. Uh, I really enjoyed looking at both of the the uh, Auerstadt and the Jena battles. They've been really, really good. And uh, yeah, if you've got any more scenarios, feel free to send them my way. Um, if you've been watching this, then uh, obviously he'll uh, have heard that little message. But yeah, so uh, so well done to him and to Grizzly Fox, who's playing as the uh, Prussians. And then uh, well done to Henry the Helicopter and to uh, Sergeant Thunder as well. I mean, he did a very good job. They both did very good jobs um, playing as uh, their respective factions. And uh, I mean, yeah, actually, I said the French were they uh, were outnumbered, actually. Yeah, two th this is about, we'll call this 2,500. This is uh, 1,500 here, so, and that's an army of 3,000 there that Antonio's got. Uh, see, so there's about 4,500 there, there's about, uh, it's about 4,000, it's about a 500 man difference, and I'd say. So, uh, I mean, it's not a major, like, difference, but I guess there's a, there's a little bit of a numerical disadvantage for the French, which I guess you get quite nicely in there, with the historical, uh, with how it went in his history. Um, or historical accuracy, I think that's what I was trying to say. Uh, Krassi is here anyway for uh, Antonio getting the most kills, 277. Uh, his Fusilier is here getting 216. Uh, his uh, Krassi is again getting 179, they did very well. His uh, Grenadier is getting 153. This is the, the usual sort of units getting the most kills. Krassi is Grenadier is often get the most kills. The Fusilier is being up there getting like 216, it's kind of a surprise, I will admit. Grenadier is getting 110 there. Gun, uh, 12 pounder gun getting uh, 140 kills, that did well. Putting That was putting holes into the... Uh, French line, though, like, by the end of the game, they just could not deal with it. They had no guns to reply with uh, at that point. And there are the rest of the results if you want to have a look at them. So, yeah, if you enjoyed the Battle of Auerstadt, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment. I've got plenty more scenarios I've got plans to play myself, and, I mean, if anyone's got some scenarios of their own, um, or just historical battles that they would like to send my way, do do so. Join the Discord. Send them in the uh, re send your replay in, and I will definitely check it out. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you in the. Next